John chapter 17 and John chapter 18 are the introduction to the answer of the question, what is truth? As you turn to John chapter 17, you begin by noticing in the beginning the words of Jesus were lifted up His eyes into heaven. And you notice in the very beginnings in verses 1 through 5, Jesus begins to pray for himself. As we move into verses 6 through verses 19, Jesus prays for his disciples. And in verses 20 through 26, Jesus prays for his followers, usually referred to as his believers. And that moves us into the scene of chapter 18, which is the betrayal in the garden. We see in verses 1 through 11, Jesus is in the garden. In verses 12 through 14, Jesus is bound for humanity. In verses 15 through 18, Peter denies Jesus. In verses 19 through 24, Jesus is questioned by the high priest. In verses 25 through 27, Peter twice again denies our Savior. In verses 28 through 40, Jesus is brought before Pilate. And in the end of that particular scene, Pilate stands before Jesus before he goes out of the judgment hall and responds to the last sentence Jesus says unto Pilate with this question. What is truth? What is is truth. Little did he know that truth was already proclaimed before him and the answer to his question was already given. What is truth? In our short study this morning, I want us to look at John chapter 18 verses 28 through 40 and try to answer the question by the time we end, what is truth? And try to figure out what that small word truth means. And where we can find it. And how we can exemplify it in our lives. And we're going to do it by simply staying in John chapter 18. Only one other time are we going to leave John chapter 18 and go into the book of Matthew to a familiar account. And get a little bit of extra context to what's happening in John chapter 18. But we'll stay with the context of the chapter. We're going to study this from John chapter 18 verses 28 through 32. And get the context of the question, what is truth? We're going to look at the question itself in John chapter 18, verse 33, all the way down to verse 38, and get the question. And then we're going to look at John chapter 18, verses 38 through 40, and we're going to get the results. And then once we finish all of that, we're going to ask ourselves the question this morning, what is truth? And hopefully by then, the answer will be evidently clear. What is truth? Begin with me in John chapter 18, and I want us just to read together verses 28 through 32 to get the setting of the context. Then they led Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment, and it was early. And they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. Pilate then went out unto them and said, What accusation bring ye against this man? They answered and said unto him, If if he were not a malefactor, we would not have delivered him up unto thee. Then Pilate said unto them, Take him and judge. Judge according to your law. The Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death, that the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled which he spake, signifying the death which he should die. 
Pilate's going to ask the question in just a few moments, what is truth? And here's the scene that's being set before us. We remember the context of chapter 17. Jesus is praying in the garden. We remember in chapter 18, in the beginnings, Jesus is bound for all of humanity. We remember Jesus tells his disciples not to war for him. Not in this physical war. We remember the three denials of Peter. And thus we enter the scene. Pilate is in the judgment hall. And the Jews bring the bound Jesus unto the hall. I want you to notice verse 28, because there are some very interesting things that happen here. This hall of judgment was an interesting place. It was a place in which carried the insignias, the, the depictions, the really carved in stone depictions of Caesar. And the Jews would not enter into that hall. It's, it was one of the 613 different traditions that the Jews had created based upon God's law. And they would not go into that judgment hall. Notice the passage says, lest they should be defiled. You see, they were not wanting to put any image before God. Now, on the face of that, it sounds wonderful, doesn't it? They were so devoted unto God that they were not going to enter into this hall of judgment because they did not want to put an image before the Most High God. But little did they know they had already bound him and delivered him to this hall. So Pilate comes out to them because it was early and he asked them this in verse 29. What accusation bring ye against this man? Their answer was interesting. They describe unto Pilate that we would have not brought this man unto you except he be in need of judgment. They call Jesus in this particular passage a malefactor. I find this to be a very interesting word because it's only used five times in the New Testament. Here in John chapter 18 verse 30 and also in four other locations. And here in John chapter 18, verse 30, is the only place it is translated malefactor. In the four other areas in which it is used, it describes an evildoer. Notice what they're talking, and notice what they're saying about Jesus. They answered and said unto Pilate, If he were not an evildoer, we would not have delivered him up unto thee. You see, as we look at the accusation that's being made upon Jesus, we understand that the Jewish people, the high priest, they've already sentenced his death. And they're trying to set into motion the works so they did not have to do it. What they're saying unto Pilate in verse 30 is, or verse 31, is we're religious people. We cannot put a man to death. Notice verse 31 in the ending. The Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death. They just had not realized yet. They had already sentenced Jesus unto his death. Here's the answer that Pilate gives. Take ye him. And judge him according to your law. They knew they couldn't. This is one of the few, or one of the many times we're going to find that the Jews did not have an appropriate answer for the killing of Jesus. And they give their excuse. Because of our law, we cannot put this man to death. It's not lawful for us, verse 31, to put any man to death. As we're beginning to outline the context of what's happening in the ending part of John chapter 18, I want you to notice one crucial thing. Those in which are bringing Jesus unto Pilate made excuses. Those that were bringing Jesus unto Pilate made excuses. So the context of what's getting ready to happen to the question that Pilate's going to ask Jesus, what is truth is, 
the Jews made excuses. So let's move into the question that's getting ready to be asked. Look at John chapter 18, verse 33. And this is very crucial for us to notice. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again. Everything that's just happened was done outside. Remember in the beginning, they brought Jesus into that judgment hall. The Jews would not go in and Pilate came out to them. Remember where Jesus is. He's in the hall of judgment. All the time he was in the hall of judgment as Pilate's on the outside, the Jews are plotting, they're trying, they're twisting their way into getting Pilate to crucify Jesus. So Pilate returns back into the room. Verse 33, Then Pilate entered in the judgment hall again and called Jesus and said unto him, the first question he asked him, Art thou the king of the Jews? This is the return of Pilate. Look at Jesus' answer in verse 34. Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it to thee? We can tell by the entering scenes of Pilate as he returns back into the, into the hall. And he calls Jesus unto him and says, Art thou the king of the Jews? But there are some questions here. From what Pilate can see, the man Jesus in which is before him is not the king of the Jews. From what he's been told by the Jews, he's not the king of the Jews. So there are questions that are out to be asked. And we're going to see this scene that's going to be taking place between Pilate and between Jesus of questions and answers. But we need to take a moment just for a second and ask this question. Why is this account crucial? Why is this account crucial? Why even spend our time on a Sunday morning looking at John 18, 28 through 40? And here's the answer. Because we're going to find the answer to the question, what is truth? It's just going to take us a moment to get there. I think everyone that's in this room and anyone that wants to be a religious type person has to start with the question, what is truth? Because we understand something about truth. We know we need truth. So Pilate and Jesus are in this section of questions and answers that are going back and forth. So we see the reaction of Jesus in verse 34. Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it of thee, of me? Jesus was essentially saying, who set you up to this? Did you think of this question yourself? We can also look at this particular section as if Jesus is asking Pilate, is this a trick question? And Jesus, and Pilate gives his response to Jesus, verse 35. Am I a Jew? Before we move far, further in the response that Pilate is giving Jesus, I, I want us to remember one fact. Jesus and Pilate are currently in the hall of judgment. Remember that as you're looking at what's happening here. Am I a Jew? Verse 35. Thine own nation and the chief priests had delivered thee unto me. Notice this last this question. What hast thou done? This is the response of Pilate to Jesus, and the response is almost indifferent. Why should he care about the nation of the Jews? And why should he care about their dirty work? But it seems as if he has questions. What have you done? He remembers what the Jews had told him already. If he were not a malefactor, we would have not brought him unto thee. If he were not an evildoer, we would have not brought him unto you. But they did. 
And thus the reality that Jesus gives in verse 36, the response of, am I a Jew? Jesus said in verse 36, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight, that I should not be delivered unto the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Notice all of these questions are centered around the main question that began, are you the king of the Jews? It's all in legal type terms. Remember, it's a courtroom setting. And the questions are going back and forth and back and forth. And every time there's a new question. But the reality is being stated in verse 36. The kingdom in which Jesus is king of is not a king upon this earth. He was not a threat unto Pilate. He was not a threat unto the Jews. There was going to be no war. There would be no more fighting. Even when we think of what happened in the garden in John 18, the beginning. Verse 10, then Simon and Peter, having a sword, drew it and smote the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. And the servant's name was Malthus. Then said Jesus unto Peter, put up thy sword into the sheath. The cup which my Father hath given me, shall I not drink it? It wasn't a war. It wasn't an earthly kingdom as it's established by earthly kingdoms. And then we see verse 38. And the question becomes to be asked by Pilate. Look at the very first question in verse 38. What is truth? Out of everything that's been said, out of everything that's been observed, here's the final question that Pilate has for Jesus. What is truth? If you look at verse 37, the question that comes before, what is truth, is art thou a king then? And notice the response of Jesus, thou sayest that I am a king. To the end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Remember, we're trying to answer the question, the same question that Pilate asked, what is truth? I want you to carefully notice again the response of Jesus before the question, what is truth? Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause I came into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. So we're at a crucial question. What is truth? And for now, we will not answer that question. Because we need to see all of the scenes play out unto the people, unto the Jews, and unto Pilate's response unto these individuals. And look at the result that happens from verses 38 down to verse 40. We see, as we begin the result, the innocence that's being displayed by the man named Pilate. Verse 38, the last part. And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and said unto them, I find no fault in him at all. But you have a custom that I shall release unto you one at the Passover. Will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Pilate states the innocent nature of Jesus. Remember, he leaves the judgment hall and goes back out unto the Jews again and states that the man that they said was guilty was innocent and we see the anger of the jews you have to go back at this time to matthew chapter 27 the only time we leave john chapter 18 and notice matthew chapter 27 verse 20 matthew chapter 27 verse 20 all of these accounts being linked together we need to look at matthew 27 verses 20 through 24 and see exactly what's happening as we see Pilate going out of the judgment hall, speaking unto the Jews, and the end thereof. 
Matthew 27, verse 20 reads this. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor answered and said unto them, Whether of the twain will that I release unto you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? And they said unto him, Notice these words very carefully and very clearly, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could, not, that he could prevail nothing, but rather a tumult was made, he took water, and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. Now you and I both know that the hands of Pilate are not innocent. Because the washing of his hands here demonstrates unto you and me that he did not care. That he was more concerned about the revolt of the people than the life of the innocent man. And thus it proves a point unto you and me, the innocent nature of Jesus. And this is crucial to our application that's happening in John chapter 18. As Jesus stood before Pilate, he was innocent. When Jesus stood before the Jews in the garden, he was innocent. When Jesus stood before the high priest, he was innocent. And as Jesus stands in our minds today, He is innocent. The result of the matter is the people were convinced that He was guilty. And the substitution was made. There were many things that the Jews and the Roman Empire had in common and had in connection with each other to keep their peace between the people. And one of those things is that substitution that happened upon the Passover. And one man could be released. And one man would be put to death. And the man that was put to death was not the man that was guilty. But it was the one that was innocent. And I want to impress upon our minds as we're looking at the results of what happens in verses 38 to verse 40 that the guilty man, verse 40, was set free. And the innocent man, chapter 19, was scourged, mocked, and crucified. But that still brings us to a crucial question. What is truth? We've noticed the context of what's happening. The questions in which were stated... And the final question in which was asked unto Jesus from Pilate, what is truth? And we've noticed the result of Pilate going unto the Jewish people and saying, this man is innocent. But we've still not answered the question, what is truth? I want to take your mind back to John 18, verse 37. And we need to read this again to answer the question in our minds, what is truth? Because it's going to impress upon us as we look at this particular section what the answer to the question really is. Remember Pilate asked in verse 37, Art thou a king then? And notice the response of Jesus. John 18 verse 37. Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born. And for this cause I came into the world that I should bear witness unto the truth. The truth is being mentioned now notice the next phrase very clearly. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. So what is truth? The answer to the question that Pilate asked was given to Pilate before he asked it. Everyone that is of the truth Heareth my voice. You and I both understand that truth is something that comes from the Almighty God. And the voice of Jesus was that which was proclaiming truth in the day in which He was crucified, in the day in which He was innocent, and in the day in which He was risen. 
the answer to the question was given. When Pilate asked the question, what is truth? Truth was looking at him. And this morning we ask the question, what is truth? And we hold inside of our hands a book that gives us the answer to the question in which we ask, what is truth? It's right here. You know the rest of the scene of John chapter 19. Jesus was taken. He was beaten to the near point of death. And then he was crucified. And the greatest part of that account is, because of that, salvation exists. Because of that, eternity exists. And because truth stood in the presence of Caesar... Eternity is oh so sweet. I think the question that's apt to be asked this morning is not just what is truth, but the question should be asked of each of us is, what are you? What are you? Are you a child of God? Are you one who is following after the voice of truth? Or are you something completely and entirely different? The answer is for you to decide. What are you? If you realize this morning that you are not following after truth, and I want you to be very clear with these facts. In this book is the truth about salvation. And this book teaches us plainly that because of the cross, we can have salvation. And if I'm willing to hear the words of God and believe them, put my faith in them, repent of my past sins, which means change, no longer do those things that are sinful according to truth. Confess the name of Jesus and then be immersed in water so I can come into contact with the blood in which was shed upon the cross. I can stand today as an individual who stands in truth. And I can go home this morning and I can lay my head on my pillow tonight and know I'm covered in truth. Maybe the case that you are a child of God and you've done those things before. You and I both understand the world works in overtime against us. And sin seems so enticing and it seems so wonderful. But I want to encourage you with this fact. Sin goes against truth. And sin is the reason Jesus was upon the cross. And that should encourage us for just a moment. Because we understand that as a child of God, I'm still given the opportunity to have my sins removed from me. And eternity is still sweet. It may be the case that there's something in your life that has separated you away from God right now. There's a song we're going to sing, and it's going to give you a moment to think. Do you need to become a child of God? I encourage you, behind that blue curtain, right in front of you right now is water, and you can become a child of truth. I encourage you this morning, that if you're willing to confess your faults unto your Almighty God, He is willing to forgive you. After Pilate asked the question, what is truth? He exited. And the true nature of truth begins as it was sacrificed upon the cross. The only question becomes right now, do you want to partake of that sacrifice and become his child or make your life right with the Lord? We ask you to do so as together we stand and sing. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright